Hey everyone, this is Vintage Vinny, and I have a thrift store, eBay, flea market, antique store haul to share with you all. I didn't find nearly as much stuff in one trip as I would have liked, so I decided to hold on to it and compile it into one big video. But before I get started, I thought I'd share with you guys uh, something that I picked up at Marshall's that's, you know, Marshall's doesn't sell anything vintage, but if you do ever go and you happen to see this really, really cool mid-century looking um, reusable uh, bag, I would recommend picking it up if you like this kind of thing. Uh, because I'm an associate, I get 10% off, so I got this for 90 cents. I haven't been buying these bags a lot, and I've actually gotten rid of a ton of them that I bought. Feeling really stupid, um, even going through some of the stuff that I brought back from our storage unit this past weekend, just rummaging through it. Because we are planning on doing a garage sale this pa uh, upcoming weekend to, you know, just purge and get rid of some more stuff. Our community's doing it. Not a lot of people really participate in it, but what the heck. So yeah, I got this, and I thought this was really, really cool. I picked up three of them. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, I got one thing that I missed in previous haul videos, and for whatever reason, I don't know why I forgot it. And if you guys see me picking up my, uh, my, uh, tumbler here to get a glass of water, I apologize. I have some allergies. The back of my throat is just a little bit, and my eyes itching. Just took some Benadryl before I uh, started filming this, so sorry. But I have one item that I've missed throughout, like, two videos ago. This is a uh, really, really cute pink um, kids baby planter. It's made by Samson Import Co. and it's uh, dated 1963. I paid three dollars, but I think this was on sale and I got it for a dollar twenty. Sorry, handle just fell off of the uh, tumbler. So I think I can probably sell this for about seventeen to twenty dollars on eBay. Alright, so items that came from eBay. You all know I've been on a kick for the uh, pinup arcade cards. These range from about $1.25 to about $2 a piece. I don't know how well they're going to show with the glare, but you get the idea. I really like this one a lot. I think it might be Tempest, but I'm not exactly sure. I just like that she has a lace umbrella and she's just kind of dressed in that like risque outfit of this era. So yeah, this is going to go into my uh, pinup book, as all my other ones do. From the flea market, I'll start off from the week, is this um, really, really cool, I would date this to probably the 1930s or the 1940s. Um, just a really neat, I think this is from a calendar, like they cut the calendar off and then they just use this for art. Paid two dollars for it and I really like it. I think I'm going to frame her and put her up. This does kind of look nautical, and as you guys know, my room is beachy themed, at least this temporary room is anyway. So I'm definitely going to try to find a frame for that, and maybe I'll put it over on my uh, hope chest just and display it, because I think she's really cool. Alright, and do you guys follow me on Instagram? And if you don't, the link for it's going to be down below in the description box. It's Vintage Vinny or Vinny Mac 1995 I post a lot of the cool stuff that I find, try to post some stuff that I sell, just to kind of say, hey, look, if you see this, buy it. And I got a couple things that I've posted to it that hopefully you saw. I have stuff on my, uh, I guess you could call it my computer table, so that way it makes it easier and more space for me to put the stuff when I'm done showing it to you all. So... For $10, I got this really awesome Roy Rogers and Dale Evans lunchbox. I remember, I think back in 2011, I was at one of the flea markets that actually was really awful in the town that I used to live in, and a gentleman had one of these. And his was in much better shape, but it didn't have the thermos, and he wanted $50. And actually, after I bought this, I uh, just looked it up to see what it was worth, and I found one that had been put up for auction. And of course, it was in better shape, and it had the original thermos with the original glass insert, and it sold for $82. And mine, of course, is not in the best of shape, but I love the display of it. And I have a lunchbox that um, is from the Beverly Hillbillies, or is Beverly Hillbillies theme from 1963. And I also have one from Mork and Mindy, which is from 1979. So this, I think, dates to about 1953. Let me show you guys the thermos. This is what it looks like on the inside. It has a little hook to hold the thermos in place. And this is what the thermos looks like. Really, really cool. And again, it does not have the glass insert. But yeah, that's really cool. So I paid 10 bucks for that set. I was really, really excited. 
And then for $5, I actually got another Roy Rogers lunchbox, but this one does not have the glass insert, or the thermos, excuse me. And that one's really cool. This one has a stamp on the bottom, or an embossed, and it says the American Thermos Bottle Company in Norwich, Connecticut? Yeah, Norwich, Connecticut. And that's what the back looks like. So again, $5 for this one. I really, really like that. So if you ever see old tin lunch boxes and you can get them cheap and they're in good condition, pick them up because there's always a collector out there who's looking to buy. If I can find it. I know there's another thermos somewhere. Um, wonder where it is. Give me one. Oh, never mind. Right here. Sorry. <laughs> so this is another one that came with the set of the Roy Rogers ones. This was also five dollars. This is a. Um, what do you want to call that? Whole temp Davy Crockett thermos. And this again, I've also seen at an antique store before. And they wanted like $68 just for this thermos. And I thought that was really ridiculous. So I got this for $5. I'm really, really excited to own it. So also flea market. Oh yeah, this is going to go into something that I'm going to show you at the end of this video. These are not worth anything, but I really, really liked the graphic on the card. This is just some Solo, Sherry, Bobby pins. I just thought the graphics on that was so cool. Um, I dated to probably the 1930s or maybe even the 1940s. Again, awesome graphics. I love it. I can't wait to display it. Alrighty. So, running with some of the thrift store items. Got this the other day. I don't know what it is. I know it's a treehouse, obviously, but I don't know who, what character it is or who played on it or who was, you know, featured on it. It is dated 1974 by the Hasbro Industries Company, so Hasbro, obviously. And it was, as you can see, $2.99, and I got 25% off with my um, rewards membership with them. So I paid about $2.50 for that. Uh, what I like to do with these, um, I'm thinking maybe I can display them on a wall, like up, like on a shelf, and just have a bunch of like Fisher Price and stuff like this, just for cool display purposes. Of course, I'm going to clean it. If you guys know who or what this is, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking to find out stuff like this. Okay, from Salvation Army, I don't know how old this is, but I thought it was really, really cool. It's either a deer or a gazelle. Uh, gold and white, typically not my favorite colors, but it was vintage, and I was, again, on a vintage kick, so I thought this was kind of cool looking. And it was only $1.50. No cracks or chips. Uh, in terms of date, I would say anywhere from maybe the 40s through the 60s, maybe. Because there's nothing on here to indicate what company it was made by, where it was made even. But I just thought it was really, really cool and kitschy. And you guys know I love my kitsch. Now, I'm going to need you all's help. Because for 50 cents, I grabbed four of these giant seashells. And they have a... Focus or not. Maybe not. <laughs> well, anyway. Oh, it was backwards anyway. They say made in Japan on them. I got four of them for 50 cents. These, um, I know were used to serve um, fish and sushi and stuff like that on. So I got those four because they had that Japan sticker on it. But weeks and weeks ago, maybe actually more like months, I actually got one, two, three, four, five, six of them for 25 cents each. So I paid $1.50 for these. But these don't have marks on them, nor do they have the same cut as these ones do. So if you guys think these are the same thing and I can lot them together and sell them, let me know because I think I got a real breadwinner here. Okay. For $4, I got these um, tabletop hockey men. They're made of metal. I got four of the blue and four of the red. Um, these probably will only go for about $20, $25 bucks on eBay. Um, just anybody who's looking to replace them 
will buy them. And they are earlier ones, so I thought those were really, really cool. From Unique Thrift Store again, always rummage through their holiday items because they always are cheaper when it's not in season. So I got this uh, really, really cool Santa Claus's Post Office Bank. Now, I typically don't go for banks because they're not really worth all that much, but I liked this, and this would be great to display. It does have a Wyatt Dunnigan and Williams Karoff ink made in Japan sticker on it, but of course the sticker is messed up from years of storage and whatnot. And I paid a whopping $1.99 for that. That would be good in a booth if I had one, but I'm not going to sell that. Now, one of the weird things about one of the Goodwills that's in my area is they will price dish sets, like, individually at, like, a dollar a piece. So, it's kind of weird, and that's why a lot of the dishes and stuff don't really sell, because they're asking individual prices for it. If they maybe grouped them together, like, like one of the Goodwills that's actually just down the street from me, tapes dish sets together and sells them that way, and they move. But I couldn't resist these little guys here, and I'll show you what I mean. These are little nut cups that would come in a set, kind of like a hot chocolate set or something like that. At first, I thought they were dollar store um, pieces. That's why I didn't even bother picking them up. But then I said, you know what, let me go back and look at them, because you just never know. And they have an, if it'll focus, an Inarco Japan sticker on the bottom of them. So I grabbed all four that they had. They had three of these guys and then just one with the holly leaves on. So I thought those were cool, and those were a dollar a piece, and I guess that's okay. Those were cool, and um, if you don't know what those are, like I said, they're nut cups. Back in the 60s, if you were to go to a holiday theme party, or even just a holiday party in general, why did I say holiday theme? <laughs> um, these would be filled with peanuts or cashews, or maybe even pecans or walnuts, maybe. You grab them, you eat out of them, and then when you were done, you just put them back, and then they got washed, and you could reuse them for the next season. So I just thought that was really, really cool, and for a 99 cents each, I didn't think that was too much to ask. From the Salvation Army that's in my old town, I was there thrifting with my friends for my birthday, just some of my former co-workers who like to thrift, and I come across this uh, little cute little anthropomorphic piggy. It's actually a salt shaker, because it has the two holes. Um, it does have a Japan sticker on the bottom of it, very faded and old and whatnot. Um, he was priced at one ninety nine, but yellow tags were half off, so I got him for a dollar. thought that'd be kind of cool. Maybe I'll display that. Now, this came from the Goodwill that is actually down the street from me. It was 99 cents. I assume it's probably from the 1970s, just judging by the um, color of it. It has the Jamco Plastics Company, or Metal Company, sorry, Metal Productions Company um, embossed on here. It's a pineapple, and it's an earring tree. Um, I'm not sure what I can get for it, because I don't see anything like it on eBay. Maybe This would probably be, do better on Etsy if I sold on Etsy. Um... I might throw it up on eBay for $15 or best offer and see what happens. I think it's really kitschy, and pineapples are in right now, so I thought, what the hey, I'll give this a shot. And if it doesn't sell, oh well, I'm only out a dollar. Now, for $1.50, running with the uh, baby planters, I came across this bassinet, and I thought this one was really, really interesting. It's kind of like a woven ceramic, feels like a basket. It's got ABCs and a gold... Um, what is that called? God, safety pin. And on the other side, it has oil pins and talcum powder bottles on there. This one was made in 1961 by Napco. It even has the foil sticker on it for Napco National Potters Company made in Japan. I paid a dollar fifty for that. Um, in terms of pricing, because there's so many of these out there, maybe seventeen dollars is what I'll charge because I think this one's rather unique and I don't see any other ones like it listed right now not that I've seen so yeah for 75 cents I picked up this um, these boulevard playing cards they're in the original box and this is what it looks like on the back kind of like a shabby chicish looking sorry guys I'm having focusing issues today Yeah, you get the picture. There we go. So I'm going to send those to a fellow YouTuber. They're not worth anything. But I know she'll probably use them for crafting, or she'll just hang on to them for old time's sake. Now, again, another piece that I found at the flea market, if you can ever find them, 
snatch him up if he's a good price. It's this little uh, Esso household oil bottle. I paid $2 for him. The person who had him had a make a best offer sticker on it, and typically I do not like that because I don't want to overchart or I don't want to overpay and I don't want to underpay and feel like I'm ripping them off. So, I mean, do you guys feel that way too? Because that's how I feel. So, yeah, this little guy is really cool. He's worth about $26. That's what the last one sold for on eBay. So if you pick him up for a cheap price, you're looking at some good money here. Um, in terms of date, I would say he's probably from the 1960s or 70s as a promotional giveaway for Esso Oil Company. And I'm not going to sell him. I'm actually going to keep him. But if I ever do have to sell him, I know I can get 20 to $30 for him. So this is a little bolo for you. From a, the Salvation Army in town, I think this is from the 1970s. It's a rubber um, Statue of Liberty um, eraser, maybe? Or maybe it's just a rubber figurine. I paid a whopping quarter for that. I'm going to throw that in a plastic baggie, like a small one, and then I'm going to put that in my uh, jar that I'm going to show you all. So I thought that was really cool. Scouring the antique malls around me, you all know that antique malls in a sense, are not the best place to source because everybody knows what they have or people just overcharge. But there's always one vendor that always has really good prices and he moves stuff. So I don't know if I ever told you all this, but I've been on the lookout for a Gillette Fat Boy adjustable razor. And I actually came across one for four bucks at one of the antique malls that's in, in town. And according to my dad, there's a special... Oh, yes. It's... Um, F3, and that dates it to 1960. This is made by Gillette. Again, paid four bucks. These are the ones that you want to look out for if you're into either collecting or if you're looking to sell. Other ones that are out there don't really sell for that much because I guess these are just more desirable for some reason. And you can still use these today. There are tons of old razor blades out there that you could use. And I've actually shaved with one of these one time. And I noticed that, um, you know, of course, you have to go really carefully on your face. You can't just go zoop, 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 like you can with modern-day razors. But this one actually, when you actually shave with it, you go down real gently on it, and it actually makes your skin feel really smooth. Like, sometimes when you shave with the newer razors, you can still feel like you didn't cut down the hair enough, so you, you'll still feel a little fuzzy. But, yeah. Anyway, this is a great item. Maybe I'll use it at one point, and it actually looks much cleaner than when I found it. So we put it through a sonic cleaner, which, you know, is like a vibrating machine you can throw a cleaner in, and then it takes off all the gunk. And I actually took some uh, nail polish remover, which was probably not the best idea, to it just to get rid of some of the extra gunk inside, and then you just rinse it off to get rid of that, that chemical. So I thought $4 was pretty good for that. Oh yes, I got this at one of the antique malls. And again, this was another piece that I posted to Instagram. This was originally $3.50 and then the booth was having a 15% off sale, so I got it for $2.98. This is a 1956 Marilyn Monroe fan club. And I, of course, am a part of that because I love Marilyn so much. I love her so much that I have her up in my bedroom. I don't know if you all will be able to see that, but there she is. She's up above. But yeah, I love her so much. I don't know why. I ever since I was a teenager, I've just I've loved her. But yeah, this has a uh, um, it says made in the United States, copyright 1956 by N M M M. I thought that was really cool. That's another item that's gonna go into my fun little jar of small items. So I did look this up just to see what it goes for, and these of course don't go for very much, and you do have to pay shipping, so I didn't think paying almost three bucks for this was too much to ask, and especially because I love Marilyn so much. Alright, uh, again, something that I might send off to a fellow subscriber. Um, these ones I'm actually going to keep. These are the uh, Choir Kids. They're made by Girly Candle. I paid 50 cents a piece for them at my Salvation Army. Unburned. Um, paints come off a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me, but I think that's okay. They're good for display. These ones I think I'm going to send off to a fellow subscriber because Thanksgiving's not really my favorite holiday to decorate for. Christmas and Halloween are, so I'll, I'll send those to a fellow subscriber, I think. 
All right, and the handle to this razor broke. I paid a dollar for it. Um, I think I'm just going to lot this up for, or lot this up with some other ones that I bought. I'm not going to buy these kinds of razors anymore because they don't really go for that much. Unless you have a bunch of them together, I'm sure somebody will snatch them up and they can collect it or do whatever. So if you ever find these and the handle is cracked on it, they're usually not worth anything. You just have to throw it away. But I said to my dad, you know, why don't I just hold on to the head and somebody can get a replacement handle for it. And throw it in a lot and I'm sure somebody's going to want it. All right, last item on this little bunch of stuff is a <laughs> something that's really, really kind of kooky. It's this little uh, clown keychain. This is not original to it. The, um, the little hole that's holding it together is probably a charm from something. I don't know what. It was 50 cents. I couldn't pass up on it, and I'm going to throw that in my old jar as well. I'm kind of excited about that. All right, so let me just clean up here a little bit, and then I will show you guys the stuff that I got from this past weekend, or past week, I should say. Okay, okay. Nagging on some stuff. Oh yeah, I got this. This is actually something that I bought in the last few weeks or so. I think it was handmade, but I'm not exactly sure. I would date it to probably the 1970s, judging by these colors. Okay, two bucks for it. It does have a stamp on it. All right, all right. Uh, it says Jam on it. I don't know if that was a mold company or what, but I thought that was rather cool. And I will be holding on to that. I don't think these will go for anything. Now, if I had a booth, I might have thrown them in the booth for maybe 10, 12 bucks. That's just my estimate. All right, this was kind of interesting. I got this at the Salvation Army for $2. It's a bulldog planter. Again, just something that I'm going to display, clean and display. I don't know if he's a planter or not, but, but um, sometimes my Salvation Army gets stuff that people just don't, I guess maybe they go to an auction and then they just get stuff that's from a former antique dealer and then they didn't, couldn't sell and they didn't want it. So apparently the person on here thought that this was an unmarked McCoy piece and I think it is, because I looked it up on eBay, and these don't go for very much at all, because you know shipping is ridiculous, but um, maybe eight, nine, ten dollars is probably the max I could get for it if I was going to sell it. I paid two. I just thought that was kind of cool, and you don't, I haven't seen anything like this before. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. Um, again, another piece that I didn't really know what it was, but I thought it was rather unique. It's like a trinket box. Um, it has, like, a Zodiac kind of a thing on it. I thought that was kind of interesting. It was, technically speaking, I got it for free because my friend paid for it, and then I bought something for her at another thrift store to make up for what she spent on this for me. This was approximately $3.21. Not too bad, and I'm not even sure if it's old or not. This is ceramic, this part is, and there is a mirror on the inside. But, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. You never know what you're going to find when you're out thrifting. Um, maybe I should not have bought these. I didn't know what they were. They're, they look like publicity photos, like cut out from a magazine. They were $2 for the for both of them. This one right here is Jean Tierney. I already know that because her name is actually in it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not, but it's right here. Right here. Now, who this is, I don't know. I think it's Brenda Marshall. Whoever that is, I don't know, but if you guys know, let me know in the comments, because I've never, ever heard of this person before. Alright, now we're going to delve more into some more thrifting items that I've picked up. I think I'm going to send this to Real Nifty Vintage, because I don't like Ivy. But this is the San Franciscan Ivy earthenware from the U.S. It was $1.99. I know this is exactly the dish that, um, I know the... Yeah, I'm repeating myself. These are the dishes that Lucy had, I know, and I love Lucy. So I think he will really like that, and he can add that to his dishware collection. It was just kind of something that I randomly spotted. I thought it was a newer dish, but it's old, as you can tell from the back. And they don't go for very much individually, because you know shipping is ridiculous for dishes. Oh, something just sold on eBay, or I just got an offer on something, so I'll check that out after I'm done filming for you all. 
Now, I did kind of score on some Pyrex, so I'm kind of excited about it because, you know, one piece I'm going to make my money back on. Probably a $35 item, and I'm going to show you right now. It's wrapped up. This is a, let's see, it's Pyrex, and it is a one and a half pint or quart uh, nesting bowl. It's yellow striped. I don't know if that is what the pattern is called. I paid a whopping $2.49 for that. Apparently the person at this unique was pricing stuff pretty well. So sometimes their Pyrex is priced pretty high. And some, like I scored this time, I got this for $2.49. And the next piece that I'm going to show you, I got it for even cheaper. Um, so yeah, I'm probably going to throw that up for $35. Bucks, and I will probably accept offers of $30. Now this piece I'm really, really excited about. Like, I'm sure you can tell by my voice. I did clean it because it was pretty dirty. This is the Amish Butterprint Refrigerator Dish. And guess how much I paid for this thing. I got it for $1.49 because I got it 25% uh, off. Now, it does have some marks on it still that I've been OCDing, trying to clean up. Um, I'm not sure that these will go for a lot because it's not the nesting bowl set. Uh, but... I love it, and I've never seen this print out in the wild. So I was like, okay, I've seen a bunch of other Instagrammers find it, and so I was like, all right, this is for me. I'm definitely going to keep that. From Also from Unique, I'm going to send these to a friend. Um, this one was actually a better deal because you got two items in it. I don't know that this is old or not. I'm going to scan it for Amazon if it's got a barcode. Um, I got two 1965 Milton Bradley flashcards for $1.49 each. Actually, this was $0.75 cents each. I'm going to send her those. She can probably craft with them or something. And then there's this party games thing. I haven't even opened it. Maybe I should just to see what it is. I don't think it's old at all. No, it's not. It's just like this party thing that's made to look old. So I'll see what that is. I don't think that's old at all. But yeah, these are the flashcards. I think Mr. Home can do some wonders with those. From eBay, I got some. I got a really good deal on some Betty Grable films that I've heard really good things about. I got four of them for ten dollars. So I got Moon Over Miami with Donna Michi and Robert Cummings, and of course Betty Grable, and that's from 1941. Uh, Down Argentine Way with Don Amici, Carmen Miranda, and Betty Grable, and that's from 1940. The movie Pinup Girl, which also stars Martha Ray, Joey Brown, and Eugene Pallet. I think they were skating vanities. That's from 1944. And then I also got The Dolly Sisters. I've never heard of this movie before. Uh, it stars... Betty Grable, of course, John Payne, June Haver, Reginald Gardner, Frank Lattimore, Gene Sheldon, Sig Ruman, Trudy Marshall. That might be who's on that picture. I know that June Haver did um, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady, and that was one of Debbie Reynolds' first films when she got into the movie industry. So that's how I know the name June Haver. And then also another really good buy that I've been eyeing at Walmart is The Honeymooners. And this set at Walmart is about fourteen ninety six. Or is it sixteen ninety? No, it was fourteen ninety six. Target it was fifteen dollars, and then at Best Buy it was seventeen dollars. I got it brand new for five bucks at the thrift store, so that's why I love thrifting because you can find stuff like this at a better price than even a big box retailer that is not even that expensive. But all this, uh, the episodes, so I'm really really excited about that. Now, delving into the last two items that I have in this haul, again, I paid $3.99 for these. Um, it looks like Apple art. One's a wall pocket and one's just a piece of wall art. Um, they are both stamped left in Japan. I don't know if there's a market for these or not. Um, I just thought they were really interesting and I knew they were old. And they were taped together like this. And... I wanted to cut it open, and I know typically you're not supposed to do that at the thrift store, but I was probably going to buy them anyway. Um, if you guys have any idea, or if you've sold this stuff before in a booth or on Etsy, let me know what you guys think I can get. Because depending on how much it goes for, I might sell it, or I might keep it for myself and put it in my own kitchen when I get it. 
Now, I know I've mentioned to you all before that my aunt really likes the kitschy 70s, like floral, you know, just like that groovy look. So, at one of the antique malls that we go to, um, if you guys are ever in the Chambersburg, Pennsylvania area, check out the Black Rose Antiques. It's a huge mall, and there's always something for everyone there. So, one of the booths was having a 25, no, 20% off sale, and I got this groovy looking yellow and white floral. I think those might be daisies. I don't know. Unmarked uh, tray. It was $4 on sale, and I thought she would really like that. She can put all of her cool little kooky stuff that she likes. She loves, I don't know what it is, maybe it's because she's a 70s baby. She loves this kind of stuff and I'm excited to give it to her. I've got a pile of stuff from Christmas that we got for her, other vintage stuff that I found for her over the last several months. So I'm excited to give that to her. And that's everything that I have in my haul. But before I go, I would like to show you a couple of things that I've been doing. Or some one thing that I use when I'm cleaning old Pyrex. One thing is this item called Barkeeper's Friend. Cookware, it cleans. You can use it on ceramic, stainless steel, acero inoxidable, porcelain. Oh, I just completely read that in Spanish. Stainless steel, porcelain, ceramics, copper, brass, chrome, and aluminum. You can use this on. You can find this at your local TJ Maxx, or you can find it at Marshalls, Home Goods, Burlington Co. Factory probably sells it. Ross Dress for Less will probably sell it too. It's very, very inexpensive stuff, and it works like a charm. I clean, that's what cleaned off that um, Amish Butterprint uh, refrigerator dish. And the last thing that I want to talk to you all about is something that's mainly focused more on the antique booth sellers. You know, uh, Tam, you've got uh, Real Nifty Vintage, uh, Pudgy Picker, Thrifty Treasures. If you guys come across a lot of small items at like a garage sale or something like that, whether it be vintage or not, I think something that would help you all generate a really good profit, find a really nice big jar, kind of like this one right here. And fill it up with a bunch of cool little knickknacks and put, throw a price tag of maybe $30, $35, $40 $30 on it, depending on how full it is. I'm sure you can um, attract somebody to buy it. Now, this one I'm not selling. This is one that I've accumulated a lot of small stuff in and collected for myself. I've got Wade figures. I've got swizzle sticks. I have charms from the 60s and 70s. I've got some flicker rings from the 60s from the dime stores. I've got pinup in here. I've got... You name it, I'm pretty sure it's in here. I just thought that would be something really cool to show you all because especially if you sell in a booth and you're just looking for new ideas to make money, especially with smaller items that may not sell for more than 50 cents a piece, pile it up into one big jar if you can find one cheap and sell it that way. I'm sure someone will love to have a treasure hunt at a great price. So that's everything that I wanted to share with you all today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button. You'll get notified when I put out new videos. Also, check me out on Instagram and all my other social media accounts. Thanks for watching.